In this video we're going to look at constraining an object to props. So this is a motion capture file with markers that represent a bag within the uh, motion capture take. And what we've done with this is we've taken a cube which is a representation of what the bag would be in the um, real animation and we have constrained that to these motion capture points within that. So we can have another look at, at how this is done. So we have the marker points here. They show up green when we click on them. Marker 1, marker 2, marker 3, marker 4. That's for each of these points of the bag. You can notice that one of the things we did was we recorded this in an asymmetrical pattern. So there is a um, if we record it with uh, each marker on the corner of a bag, we can get a square shape which has symmetry. So we've had an offset of one of the markers so that we can actually uh, calculate which marker is which um, a lot easier. So this has been recorded in, in Vicon IQ, exported as a C3D file, and we've created a cube within Motion Builder and we've used the constraint for position and three point. So I'll just run through that process again. So if I delete this cube, um, we've seen how that works. We can see that what we have here are these four marker points that we're, we're going to work with. Um, again, I can play these through and we can see the motion of these uh, marker points for this prop and we can see the position of those points as they move. So taking it back to the beginning, I'm going to get a top-down view of that and try and get a spot where I can shape up a rectangle using a cube. So from the Asset Browser, I'm going to go to Elements. There is a drop-down for that, Element and Primitives. I'm looking at Primitives here. And I'm going to take this cube and I'm going to drop it into the scene. Drop it into the middle of the scene and just check to see how, how large that is. So it's reasonably large, um, but I will also scale that to fit the dimensions of this object here. I'm going to do it fairly roughly. This is really going to end up being a placeholder for the actual modeled prop that I would use again. So I'm using the Move, Rotate and Scale tools on the right here, which are the same as you would get in any 3D modeling or animation package. So I'm just going to line that up fairly roughly and then um, focus in on it and I can see that it's actually quite a lot taller than I wanted it to be so I'm going to shape that up to be about the right size of the bag. So it was a briefcase type bag, it did have a handle on it and um, that just about represents it. So I'm keeping it a little bit smaller than the original probably um, and that should help with overlapping of elements. So even though I've lined that up nicely, I am probably going to have to readjust where that sits as I bring in the constraints. Now in the asset browser, we have a constraints option and we have two that we're going to look at here. We're going to look at the position so we can track the position of these C3D elements. But because they're C3D markers, they don't have rotational uh, information. There's no information about the orientation. It's literally a point in space. So to get the rotation of these elements, we're going to use a three-point constraint as well. Now you can click these and drag them onto the object you wish to constrain. If I drop that into the scene here, I can say constrain object. Or we can put these directly into our navigator window here. So with the position one, I'm going to pick it up and drop it directly onto cube and say constraint object. And we also have a list of the constraints here that we've used previously and so this 3.1 and position one as well. So we have some constraints set up already. So starting with the position constraint, I can find my markers from the C3D optical file here and I can click on the first marker, bag marker 1, and it automatically gives me a new um, source 
for this um, option on that. And I can add in all four. I've used four markers on that. Um, and then I can activate this as well. Prior to doing that, I'll save it just as a good work in practice. I can activate that. And you can see there's a slight move on that object. That should then make this cube follow the position of those markers. Now it's not getting the rotation. We weren't expecting that. We've got another constraint to deal with that, but we are getting that to follow that group of markers. So if I rewind that and then also select the three point constraint there, and I can select marker one as the target, and let's say marker two. Let's see which one that is. Two. I'm going to pick up a marker four as the up for that as well. So now again we have to activate this. We can snap that. I can activate that, and you can see what's happened is this is rotated. That's because of the relationship between this target and the up. So I can um, rotate that round again, but I just want to see if there is some movement and it is actually working in terms of rotation already. So I can see that it is moving correctly in relation to that. It's doing what it wants to do and it's doing it correctly, but I need to do a, an adjustment to the rotation of that. Um, potentially I could scale that in a different way or I should be able to click on this and rotate it to the position I actually want it to be. And um, let me just get that around. There's quite a big motion movement on that. Uh, and get that to be about right. Then I should be able to use a snap tool to hold that in position. You can see there is still a bit more rotation I need to do just to straighten that out. So um, you can be more careful with that. We can snap that into place there. And now that will fit with what we're doing. So that should, as the markers go, then be fully constrained to that object. And that's the way the way of working with that. We we will want to when we send this to Maya, we will want to plot those into keyframes on the bag. Um, and then those keyframes again can be used as a substitute or as a placeholder for a bag that we may use um, a different bag, a real bag, to replace that one. So that's really the process of constraining that object. Um, we can see that this does move in other takes. We have some other takes of the bag. Um, just got another one with just the bag in it. Um, and again, that seems to be holding very well to that marker set. Obviously, there's only four markers in there rather than the um, 50 we will get when we have a character in there as well with about 40 markers on. So that seems to be holding very well. And I think a walk with bag and a walk with bag two. Um, this is going to be telling. And I can see these markers are there. We should probably have an actor set up in there as well. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to watch this through and see how that works. So the actor's not fully cleaned, but we can see that that does attach to the body there. Um, and it follows along very naturally with that. So we were coming out of the area there where the leg wasn't working. 